What I wanted to look at today was 9.5. So what 9.5 deals with is nothing new. There's no new more, no more new content per se in this. What we're doing though, it's an application of a practical application of a real life type of thing that you run across in business where we're either calculating the present value or the future value. Most of the times we're calculating the future value. We know how much we got now, what's going to be in the future, what's going to grow to, you know, that type of thing is an investment. But we could also have other types of investments called strip bonds and strip bonds are kind of working backwards where you, you know how much money you're getting at the end, but you need to know how much you got to pay to buy that right now. It's like a guaranteed payment at some time, some point in time in the future. So we're going to look at these two. In earlier editions of the textbook, if you, you have the earlier textbook, there's also some discussion in there about Canada Savings Bonds. Well, fact of the matter is Canada Savings Bond doesn't exist anymore. They've been discontinued by the uh, federal government, so we don't need to deal with them, okay? So what we are talking about is something, though, called a guaranteed investment certificate, and there's lots of examples of that. People buy GICs, they're called in short, or if you work in a bank or if you work in the banking industry, GICs are pretty common. And all GICs are, are a savings account that is, a, a, it's not a flexible savings account, meaning you can't go in and take the money out easily. When you give it to the bank, you're promising them to be able to hold on to that money for a length of time, okay? And in return for that, they're going to pay you interest on it. And they're gonna basically rent money from you. That's that's effectively what a GIC is. The reason it's guaranteed is that there's a guaranteed rate of return. It will say this is going to pay X percent interest compounded in X way. It will clearly say that. And there's different types of GICs, okay? There's some that pay this rate of interest with this type of compounding or some that pay that type of interest with a different type of compounding. So, and even then there's ones that have... Um, uh, what I call a variable interest rate. So for example, the first year you're gonna pay this rate of interest, and the second year you're gonna pay that rate of interest. So again, there's a number of permutations of them. Effectively, they, they all work the same, okay? So I wanted to take a look at this here today as an application of calculating the future value of a compound interest amount. So I've just got in here that, you know, a GIC is a guaranteed investment certificate. They usually run for five years. A lot of them are five year things. So you're basically handing the bank or the lending institution or the credit union, there's different organizations that sell them, but effectively you're handing it to them for a, a period of time, up to five years. And you're saying, you're gonna hold on to that now and you're gonna rent that to me. I'm going to promise that I'm not going to take it out. Now you can take it out, but there's penalties and all this sort of thing. So effectively you're, it's a long-term or relatively long-term investment. And in return for that, they're going to pay you interest. There's a couple of ways that these things work. Um, the first one is a regular interest version of it that just pays periodic interest. So what that does is you invest a chunk of money and they'll send you a check every so often, depending on, what the payment is. So say for example, semi-annually, that'd be two checks a year and so on. So there's that type of one. And uh, effectively there's no compounding on that because they're sending you the check. So if for example, it pays, I don't know, I'm not gonna use percentage, a hundred dollars a year. Let's assume it pays a hundred dollars a year interest. You get a check every year for a hundred dollars. That's, that's basically how it works. And at the end you get your principal back. The more common type is the compound interest version. And that is um, the first one, which is a fixed rate that says, okay, for the life of this thing, if this thing is gonna be two years long, two years in length, we're gonna pay you 3.2% for two years, okay? That's a standard version of a GIC. It will, and that's why people usually buy GICs because it's a known commodity. You know exactly how much you're gonna get. There's no risk. It, it's way to go. Because there's no risk, it doesn't pay a really high rate of interest, but better interest than what you'd have in the bank account. In order to calculate the future value of that, in other words, what we mean by is you're gonna put, let's say $10,000 into a GIC right now, 
And you can predict exactly what you're going to get at the end. If you know the interest rate and you know the compounding period, you say, well, in, in two years' time, I'm going to have $11,294.24. That's what they're going to hand me back, the principal plus the interest that's accumulated. So that's that's one. And all we do there is use the present, uh, the, the future value formula in order to figure that out. It's the same formula we've been using. And the other type of interest rate is um, a little more complicated, but effectively what they say is, okay, we're going to pay you this interest rate for this length of time, and then we're going to switch to another interest rate for another length of time. So effectively, the first year is going to pay X amount of interest rate, second year. And again, any number of permutations on these things. But the fact of the matter is the interest rate changes over time. So what you need to do there is to do a revised version of the formula. And there it is down at the bottom. It looks scary, but it's not. All it says is, okay, the future value is the is the first interest rate, that PV bracket one plus I to the one, okay? That's that first interest rate. And then it's gonna to switch to another interest rate. So that's one plus I to the two, and then potentially a third interest rate, fourth, 10th, whatever, it can go on. and Effectively, you just plug the numbers in that, and voila, it will give you the future value of the amount of money. So GICs, all we're really doing is calculating the future value. That's all it is. It's a pretty straightforward tool. So <clears throat> in this first example here, all we're trying to do is to figure out how much interest are you going to earn on this GIC, uh, given the fact that it is a 2.25% payable monthly. So I, I talked about the fact there's different versions. This, the regular, inter, the regular interest version, for example, just pays the interest out to the uh, to the investor. So here's a, one of the examples of that. So we have period, uh, we, what periodic payment does an investor receive from a $9,000 four year monthly payable, monthly payment GIC earning a nominal rate of 2.5 per 2.25% per month. So um, effectively, what we need to do is to calculate the periodic interest rate there. It's 2.25% annual, and it's a monthly. So we take 2.25%, we divide it by 12, and that will give us the periodic interest rate, which is 0.1875% or 0.01875 in the decimal. We take that simply and we multiply it by the the amount of the GIC which is nine thousand dollars so effectively that nine thousand dollars that you put in the bank is going to earn interest in that first period of 0 0.001875 which is the interest rate for the period in decimal format and that comes out to sixteen dollars and eighty eight cents so effectively every single month like clockwork you're going to get a check in the mail or an electronic transfer for $16.88. So basically that is the rent that you're going to make on that $9,000 earning 2.25%. Okay. So that's, that's how that works. Pretty straightforward. That is in order to calculate those things. Not, uh, not complicated at all. We also have um, another type of investment. So, that's one type, and we'll do some more examples of that in a minute. But another type of investment is something called a strip bond. Now you think that's a pretty dumb name. Where did they get the word strip bond? You know, it sounds something something kinky. But effectively what it is, is a bond is a sheet of paper. And you used to be able to buy bonds, uh, can savings bonds was one of the bonds that you used. And effectively the sheet of paper says that you are entitled to X dollars at the end at a guaranteed interest rate of x percent so a strip bond is effectively a promise to pay you some amount in the future okay and the deal is with the interest rate and how that that is handled the interesting thing with a strip bond though is because there is a strip <laughs> there used to be a strip on the side that you would take off, you take a strip off it. And uh, what, what really happens is you're going to, uh, let me see how I can put this. Uh, they're gonna pay you 
a guaranteed amount of money at some point in the future. So let's say $1,000 next year, okay? $1,000 next year, let's keep it simple. And what they're doing is they're selling it to you now for an amount less than $1,000. So effectively you're buying it at a discount and the discounted amount that you buy it is the equivalent of the interest that you're charged that they're paying on it or the effective rate of interest that it's paying out. So you, you get it at a discount and at the end of it, you get the full thousand dollars back. So you bought it for, let's say 980. At the end, you get a thousand dollars back. Well, the difference, the $20 difference between what you paid for it and what you got back is effectively the interest. Okay. So that's, that's generally how that works. You don't see too many examples of strip bonds anymore, but effectively the interest is built into the price or that, that sort of thing. You get the money at the end, the, the full payment comes back. Okay. So here's an example, a simple example of a, a strip bond. Okay. A thousand dollar face value strip bond has 15 and a half years remaining until maturity. If the prevailing market rate of return is 3.5% compounded semi-annually, what's the fair market value of the strip bond? So you'll notice that it's the market rate that is being used in order to figure out what the value of it. So effectively you're going to get in 15 and a half years, what this is saying with the strip bond is in 15 and a half years, you're gonna get a check for $10,000. If you wanted to buy the right to buy that strip bond, meaning a right to get fifteen uh, to get ten thousand dollars in fifteen years, you're going to have to pay some money. And the question is, how much would you have to pay? Well, how much you have to pay for it is really dependent on what the market rate is, because you're going to buy it for an amount less than that. So in order to figure out that is, what you're doing is you're taking that $10,000 that you got at the end, in this particular example, you're taking that $10,000 that you get at the end, and you're calculating the present value of that $10,000 now at the interest rate, the mar I'll call it the market interest rate, which in this case is 3.5% compounded semi-annually. So effectively what we're doing is finding the present value of an amount of money at some point in time in the future. So uh, in this case, we've got $10,000, it's future value. The, um, the annual interest rate is 3.5% compounded uh, twice a year. So we gotta find the periodic interest rate. Periodic interest rate is three and a half percent annual divided by two, and that's 1.75% per compound. We, um, we know that it's compounded semi-annually, so it's compounded twice a year, and we know it's 15 and a half years, so 15 and a half years times two compounds a year is 31 compounds. So really all we need to do is to take our present value formula and plug all the information in. So the future value is $10,000, one plus the periodic interest rate, which is 0 0.0175 to uh, the value of N, or in this case is minus N, because we do we, we can do it with the future value divided by one plus I to the N, or we can do it this way where it's future value times one plus I to the minus N. It's exactly the same formula. It's exactly the same result using slightly different form. So uh, we take 1.0175, which is one plus the the periodic interest rate to the power of 31, in this case minus 31 because of the, the way the formula is set up, and that will come to $5,840.27. So that means today, if you paid the investment institution or whomever $5,840.27, you will effectively buy the right to get that $10,000 paid out to you in 15 and a half years time. So it's really taking that 10 and discounting it back to now in order to do that. So that, that's basically how that works. So the strip bond value, as you'll see, changes every day because it depends on how far away you are from the end date when you cash, basically it cashes in and you're getting the money back. There are a whole bunch of exercises in 8.5.
So Chris to invest $18,000 in a three-year regular interest GIC earning 4.2% payable semi-annually. What is each semi-annual interest payment? So uh, as I say, the I, the periodic interest rate is 4.2 divided by two, which is 2.1%. And if you wanted to calculate the interest payment, well, it's the present value times the value of I. So it's a present value in this case is the $18,000 loan. Uh, maybe I'm not reading this. Oh yeah, she put 18,000, my mistake. My mistake, I erred, sorry. The present value is $18,000 and the end value is unknown. Sometimes I can get these mixed up. You gotta be so careful reading them. So the $18,000 is the present value. The 4.2 divided by two is 2.1%. So we take 18,000, we multiply it by the 2.1% and that gives us what they're looking for, which is a $378 periodic payment. So that's, that's effectively how that works. Let's look at number two. So in this particular problem, again, we're being asked to calculate the monthly interest payment. So it's basically the same as the first problem. <clears throat> Present value is 22,000. The payable interest is uh, 4.5%. That's the annual interest payable monthly. So we take 4.5 divided by 12. So effectively what we end up is investments 22K. 4.5%, so we got to take the 4.5% divided by 12. That gives us 0.375% per month. So we, in order to calculate, if we're looking for the interest payment, we take the PV times I, which is 22,000 times 0 0.00375, which is 3.75% in terms of a decimal. And that will come to $82.50. Any questions on those? Take a look at number three. I want you to form that one up. Mr. Dickinson, or Dixon, purchased a seven-year, $30,000 compound interest GIC with funds from his registered retirement savings fund. If the interest rate on the GIC is 2.25% compounded semi-annually, what is the GIC's maturity value? So whenever we're looking at maturity value, really that's just a fancy word for what's the future value of that chunk of money, right? Well, we need to tease out the key, the key parts. Well, the present value is 30,000, first of all. The I, the value of I, well, it's 2.25% is the annual rate and it's compound semi-annually. So we got to take that 2.25 divided by two, that's one, two, five. And then we say, well, how many, how many compoundings we got on the go? Well, we got two compounds per year. So it's FV equals PV one plus I to the N. So it's 30,000 outside of 1.01125. Uh, power 14. We do the math on that, and the future value is $35,086.56. So all we're saying is, look, if we put $30,000 in this savings vehicle now in seven years' time, that interest is going to gather up, and at, in seven years' time, when we get the money back, we'll get back $35,086.56. And then if someone asks you, well, how much interest is earned? Well, the difference between what you paid for it and what you got back is the interest, right? So there's $5,086.56 of interest earned. Look at number four. Mrs. Sandu places uh, $11,500 in a four-year compound interest GIC earning 6.75% compounded monthly. And what is the maturity value of the GIC? So in order to look at the math of that, uh, we take these, it's, uh, the 0.5625%, that converts to a decimal, 0 0.005625. 
Present value is 11,500. Future value, we're not sure of. The N is four years times 12 months, uh, 12 times a year times four years, which is 48. We just throw that all into the future value formula like I've done here. So it's 11.5, to the power of 48 comes to $15,053.20. So what we're saying is, if we took 11,500, put it in a GSE for four years, earning 6.75% compounded monthly, at the end of the four years, we would get a check for $15,053.20. The trust company offers three-year compound interest GNIC earning 4.8% compounded monthly or 4.9% compounded semi-annually. So we got a two scenarios, 4.8% compounded monthly or 4.9% Compound it semi annually. So we got to do two calculations in here. Uh, what rate should the investor choose? So, what he's really asking is which one has the higher value? Now, the, the trick is with number five is we're not given any amount of money. Right? You're going to say, wow, how much did he invest? And the answer is it doesn't matter because what we've been asked, what we have been asked to do is to look and see which one is the better investment. So if we put the same amount of money, we just plug an amount of money into one and plug the same amount of money into the other, we'll be able to make that comparison, okay? So let's just say $1,000. Let's just pick a number out of the air. As long as it's the same for both of them, could be $329.24, but let's just pick a nice round number, $1,000. So I'll just hop right to the, uh, the workout now. Sorry, it's on the side. So uh, what we got is, uh, I meant to redo this, I just never got to it. So we've got, uh, in the first instance, we've got 4.8% uh, divided by 12, which is 0.4, which is 0 .00, 0 0.04. We got to take that, run it through, and it will come to $115.45. Okay, so I think I think I'm reading it right. One hundred and forty-five dollars and one hundred and fifteen dollars forty-five cents. In the next instance, uh, where it's a three-year, four point nine two compounds a year, that's a total of six compounds. So we just run the numbers in the formula. The present value is uh, in this particular example. I, I wrote a hundred. Doesn't matter as long as it's the same in both of them. Uh, to 1.245 to the power of six, and that comes to $115 and 43 cents. So one's 46 cents, the other one is 43 cents. So, you know, what one we would pick? We're gonna pick the higher of the two. So uh, I would think that uh, the, the uh, you know, they're not really that far apart, but whichever one is the higher one, that's the one you're gonna pick now. But I'm gonna go right to number eight. I should look at number eight because that one shows the scenario of interest rate changing over time, okay? So I, I just will look at number eight. I'm gonna make a liar out of myself. Sun Life Financial offers five-year compound interest GIC earning rates. So what we've got is a GIC that has these various, I call them variable rates, but we looked at here, if the interest rate is variable, or step rate, the periodic I can differ from each compounding period. This is the formula used. The future value is the first year times the second year times the third year times any successive year. So here's the, the future value is $10,000, 1.025 plus 1.03 plus 1.035 plus 1.0425 plus 1.05. We do the math on that, basically, there's the, and that comes to $11,960.98. So this is what this $10,000 would grow to in five years, assuming these respective interest rates. Mutual life one, we need to take a look at that. So we take the, the rates, turn them in decimals, we do exactly the same thing. 
and this one comes to 11,900,479. So, you know, we ask yourself, which one's better? Well, this one is the higher, the first one, Sun Life, is a higher amount, the higher future value. So that would be the better option. So Sun Life would be the better option. And then the question might ask, how much better? Well, okay, well, the Sun Life is going to be valued at 11,996. And the mutual life is going to be 11904. We just subtract one from the other, and that will give a $556 difference. So you can watch all of those being worked out by hand right there.